What up guys, it's your boy APT Songs in the building. I wanted to talk to you guys because some interesting things have been happening on my front for my music stuff. And also I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about how much you can get into your own head about where you're at in your success journey as it pertains to you thinking if people want to get involved in your stuff or not. I recently finally got a publicist. It's going to be helping me out in terms of like going forward with my music stuff get me interviews, things I've been trying to get for years by myself, right? My publicist has me sending her things that she can use to help build up my website. I started looking back at my YouTube catalog because I, I've been doing this video thing now since 2008. And back when I was doing my video project, I was actually keeping a video vlog about where I was at in my journey, what was happening, where I was moving to, things that were coming up. And so I had that stuff to send to my publicist. But as I was looking through it, a lot of the things that I was talking about my vlogs, which is showing so much self-doubt. You know, I put the Obama, Obama song out and the first vlog I did was the fact that T-Pain was on 106 in Park, which is a video show back in the day that, that did the top 10 music videos of the week. And he had quoted my song going into one of the breaks. That takes three minutes, that's thanks for doing that for me. Oh yeah, yeah, I got you, I got you, I got you. Obama, 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 Obama. The next vlog I did, there was another guy that was hosting E! News that also quoted Obama, Obama. And even back then, I was like, uh, I got about, I figured I got about a month left before, you know, the election officially hits and the song will either die down or, uh, depending on if he wins or not, maybe pop it for a few more months after that. And then it didn't. And it, the, the popularity of that song is still going on. Like to this day, the highest stream song on my Spotify list by other people is the Obama song. But that's just one example. There were tons of videos I made back then talking about, I don't know if this is gonna work out, or you know, I hope that something happens, but I don't know, we'll see, or I just can't believe, I just can't believe this or that, or what's going on. I really thought that once Obama got elected, my song would just be like gone. But again, I'm just impressed and shocked that the song is still playing and that radio station, I'm still getting um, messages from clubs in other countries saying, hey, I went to this club and I heard your song and they were playing it. Really? In February? <laughs> Looking at that now as an as a older person, I would go back to that kid and be like, dude, things are happening. People like your stuff, they're listening to your music, they are streaming you, and you need to understand that just because you don't understand why people like it or why it's happening, to just go with it. I think that's part of the reason I was held back for so long is because I just couldn't believe people like my stuff. Even like as little as like a few months ago, I was like, when I put out the Jesus Loves Us song and people were really watching, I was like, People still are looking out for me. Like, I'm, I'm 42. Like, who's looking out for a 42-year-old dude that's rap? I've had that mindset for so long, and it's like, if I want things to happen, it has to start with, do I actually believe that the things that I want could legitimately happen? And I always think there's a small part of me that thought, like, maybe I wasn't the most believable candidate to be a rapper, a musician, beat maker, whatever. But clearly, life has shown me the opposite, because I've had tons of viral hits on my YouTube channel. I've had tons of things go viral now on TikTok. I've had people that are streaming my songs. The album I just put out is getting regularly decent streams for right now. And I can only imagine how much better that's going to get now that I have a publicist that can get me on shows to interview, you know? I, I say that because I think sometimes we're not aware of how much we actually hold our own selves back. And so if you're somebody that's watching this that has a dream of some kind, you're trying to be a musician, you're trying to be an actor, and not even other people. You yourself are sitting there thinking, mm, but that can't be me. Nah, nobody wanna listen to poor old me. Who am I to put something out there that people are gonna actually gravitate towards? Like that, that's not, that's not for, that's, that's for everybody else to happen, that's not for me, you know? And I'd say we do ourselves such a disservice when we think like that. Because, I, and, and you know, I try to tell people my, in my day-to-day -day life that ultimately it's better to go with the evidence in front of you. If you are doing things that are getting momentum, if you have people complimenting you on things that you're doing, or there's uh, stuff you're putting out there that people are like really gravitating towards, you can't be in your head being like, nah, that's not happening. That's not real. It'd be one thing if like your family, your friends were saying things that were holding you back, but I have found most people are the ones holding themselves back. We're the ones that are talking down to ourselves, that are putting self-doubt into our own selves. And hey, maybe you grew up in a, in a situation where you didn't have the most loving parents or you didn't have people like really complimenting you about things you could do or always throwing doubt your way. Realistically, that, that stuff does affect us as kids, but as we get older, we really need to get out of that mindset and do the work to start thinking more highly of ourselves and start thinking that the things that we want are actually possible. Because at the end of the day, whether it's other people saying things or not, you're the one that has to, to deal with the effects of not getting your dream done. 
And hey, some people, they're like, I'll just go my whole life doing the status quo. And that's totally fine. We need people that are status quo people, people that have regular jobs, that, that's totally fine. But if you find yourself saying, I want to do this thing, and then you're not doing it, realistically, the only person that's stopping you from doing it is you. And you have to think to yourself, what are the thoughts you have in your head? Because it's one thing to say out loud, oh, I think I do this thing, but what are your actual conscious and even subconscious thoughts that you have about doing a thing? You know, when I'm going through this exercise of going through old videos and looking up things for my publicist, I'm having to look back at like, why didn't I, at the point that this certain video came out, did I do this thing? Or why did I, you know, self-sabotage this project that I was working on that could have got me money? Like, those are questions I have to ask myself now because I now have the opportunity again to actually get out there. And I'm also realizing that, you know, there's always a fear of the unknown. Like right now, I don't know what happens at the point that I start getting interviews, I start getting other opportunities handed to me. There's a thing that says I could do absolutely great at those or I could, you know, fail at one thing and next thing I know, boom, I'm like out of the tries altogether, you know? And so I think people get so scared of the unknown because let's be real, it'd be nice if we could all say, I'm gonna chase after the thing I want and be successful at it. But the reality is, I wanna say there's more safety or it feels like safety in having a regular nine to five job where you know that you know, you're gonna go in, you know the assignments you gotta have, you're going to get the money that you need to survive. And if you do that every single day, chances are you'll live a pretty good life. And people do that and they rarely reach out of their comfort zone and think, okay, like for example, I could get an interview tomorrow. If somebody says, oh, we like the interview, we like what you're about, we wanna, we wanna work you on something like this. I have no conception of what does that look like? What is my part gonna be in whatever they want me to do? And will I be bad at it or not? I know in my day-to-day -day life, there's stuff that I'm good at. I'm good at making songs, I'm good at camera work, I'm good at doing other various things to get money that I've done over the last 15 years here in LA. But there are some unknowns out there that quite honestly can be kind of scary because I don't know what those are or what they'll entail. But you cannot, you cannot let the fear of the unknown ultimately hold you back from what could conceivably be great. Like the worst thing that happens is you mess something up, you got a great story, you learn a lesson, and you move on to the next thing. But the best thing that could happen is you are immensely happy that you're doing the thing you want to do, you're making money, but more importantly, you're putting stuff out there or you're doing things that are going to help other people, whether it's you're feeding them because you know how to cook really well, or you're putting out music that jams really well, or you're helping other people in facets of life, or you're just doing something you want to do that other people are going to look to you and be like, oh my God, if that guy did it, I can also do it. You know, I've had people come up to me since I was doing this. I've been doing music since early 2004 when I was in college, but like I started making videos in 2008. The number of people that have seen my videos that are like, oh my God, I was inspired by you. It made me want to do music. It made me realize I could do it on my own. Like I had people commenting on my newer videos like, oh, I really missed your stuff. I, I always listened to your songs back in the day and they're really, really great. I hope you're putting out more stuff. You never know who's watching you that is actually being influenced by you and is experiencing you in a positive way to where they are willing to see that you get successful, whether it's throwing money at you or throwing opportunities at you. But that can't happen if you're in your own head thinking, but really me? Just wanted to put that little thought out there for you guys. I, I encourage you all on your journeys towards being what you wanna be, doing the things that you wanna do, obviously within legal reason, of course, but like doing the things you wanna do that bring you happiness, hopefully bring you money, and also have a positive impact on the world and other people at large. So much encouragement to you all. And I said, I'm, I'm older and I'm still learning this, but I'm glad I got this opportunity coming about where I can really try to you know, put that into motion and really put more myself out there to have the successes that I've always wanted, you know? So hopefully this truth is true for you. So if you like this video, like, subscribe, all this stuff. Also my album, Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself. Volume one is out now on Spotify, all the streaming platforms. Check the links below, you'll see where it is. Um, I'm ABT Songs and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm out, peace. I don't wear no sweaters, keep my neck and my head bundled up together thanks to my hoodie. About to hop in my ride, top down, cool breeze, but I'm warm inside cause of my hoodie. Watching joggers run by, see a hot cutie is, she be catching my eye wearing